tonight on Access TV. It's Gotham Comedy Live. Get ready to laugh with Chris Monty, Ilan Altman, Yamanika Saunders, Michael Somerville. This week's host, Tom Arnold. Gotham Comedy Live. All happening right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Arnold! Oh, welcome to Gotham Comedy Live! I just found, Gotham Comedy Live is the name of the show. I just found out it is fucking, like we're live on the air right now. I had no idea. My wife is home, hi Ashley. It's like having a fucking nanny cam on me at all times. Usually she has to go to Twitter to follow my movements, but tonight, oh my gosh. And by the way, Twitter, do you do Twitter? You know, Twitter is, uh, it's, it's great and everything, and I do it, but you gotta be careful. Be careful what you say about people, because we have feelings. And this happened, I was at Super Bowl a couple years ago at New Orleans, and I go into the bathroom, I have this thing before I go on stage where I just kinda check it out. I'm not gonna pee or nothing, I'm just checking it out to see how disgusting I am. And I, I do my thing, and then I get ready to go on stage, and I, for fun, check my Twitter feed, and I swear it says, OMG, Tom Arnold does not wash his hands in the bathroom. <laughs> Listen, you can fucking murder someone in Hollywood, but if you don't wash your goddamn hands, you're out, okay? That's disgusting. So I'm like, hold the show. I gotta fix this. So I go back in the bathroom, and it's like, uh, both the Manning brothers are in there. It's a Super Bowl. Uh, Aaron Rodgers is in there with his brother. There's some kind of brother thing going on. And about 20 other guys, I go, Listen, fuckers, I don't know who just tweeted that I don't wash my goddamn hands, but let me tell you something. I didn't pee or anything, so technically I did not have to wash my hands, but I am washing them right now in front of you assholes. Please retweet that I wash my hands, okay? Please. Listen to me. I don't, that's disgusting. And when you've been divorced three times, you do nothing disgusting. I am super clean. I don't do anything in front of my wife that can be taken. I don't fart anywhere near my wife. I fart outside. I used to be cocky. I used to fart on my first wife. I thought that was funny. It's... It's not, oh my gosh, well, uh, it's great. The first time, this is when I realized this is live. Like many years ago, the first time I hosted Saturday Night Live, which happened its 40th anniversary this week, which that's cool, right? And uh, you dream your whole life, you wanna host Saturday Night Live, right? And then it, you're behind the door, and then the great Don Pardo is counting down 10 seconds for that door to open and you to be live on TV, and you're like, what the fuck was I thinking? Oh my God, I'm gonna ruin everything. I'm gonna go out there and just lay down. Everybody will hate me. I'm not worried about that anymore because I got a baby. That guy fucking loves me. I can lay down right now and he wouldn't care. He loves me that much. It's unconditional love. He's just happy to have me. You need one person in the world that loves you unconditionally, right? Everybody, it takes the pressure off. I know it's gonna end when he's a teenager, but I'll be like 90 years old then. I'm not worried about it. Oh my God, that journey for thy son, it's a, it was such a long journey, so many people involved. 23 years, I have a very minuscule sperm count, and, which, you know, when I, was, when I went to the University of Iowa, this is how I found out I had a low sperm count. Uh, I used to donate blood and plasma, get seven bucks for beer money, you know, we do that all the time. Yeah, yeah, I go to separate hospitals because they'd be on to you, you can only donate so much. And then I was like praying to God. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I said, I need a sign. And there it was. I worked at the hospital school and there was literally a sign that said, donate sperm, $35. I was like, holy hell. <laughs> that is God speaking to me. I will do that. I will do that three times a day. That's $105. I can't even, holy shit, I have a towel under my bed right now that's worth five grand. I know this is like, I'm so excited. My roommates, six of us, we piled down there and they're like, slow down. We have to test your sperm first and, and, uh, before we take you in this program. And, and then it's like, well, it feels fine. But okay. So they come back and the doctor pulls me out of the herd. He's like, he was very sad. He's like, Mr. Earl, that's some terrible news. You cannot be a part of our program because you don't have enough swimmers. And I was like, what are, how many swimmers do I have? And he's like, three. And I was like, well, that seems pretty good. What does your average man have? And he's like, three million. I was like, no, don't fuck with me. Seriously, how many? He goes, no, I don't fuck with anybody. I have no sense of humor. Three million is how many you're... So at that moment, I knew I could not get a woman pregnant the regular way. 
and, th and, and that was sad, but it's also good news because I'm old. I went to school before these terrible viruses. So like at bar time, I would be like, hey, listen, please sleep with me. I cannot get you pregnant. The worst case scenario, I sweat on you. You get a staph infection. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so anyway, 20 feet. So I started when I was 30, got married for the first time want to have a kid and it became a problem for the poor woman it's my physiological issue poor woman has to get on all the hormones and do, you know we do that in vitro fertilization thing i did 23 rounds of that with four different wives so it's not weird i don't have wives and it never happened when i met ashley i love my, i'm so lucky to have this i met ashley i said listen we can't let's adopt it's not going to happen the regular way you know and she's like okay okay and then she's like well let let's just try and so you know it's so sad because it doesn't work out you know and i know that from my history but anyway we tried three times and then we went back and she finally got it it's not going to work we're going to adopt we you, and we go to the doctor the the fertility doctor to kind of say goodbye this guy's been with me 25 years man <laughs> he's tried everything and my, and my poor wife and my wife is sitting there openly weeping and guys what is scarier than having your wife weeping there is nothing on the planet you're walking to the house and she's weeping you're like holy fuck did i do that hold on even if I didn't, I gotta fix it because fucking sports center is on in two minutes. Oh my God, what is going on, honey? So she's weeping. So I'm with the doctor, I'm like, oh my God, I gotta. So I started showboating a little bit. I'm like, yeah, you know, it's too bad. Ashley's had like seven procedures. It's too bad there's not something you can do with the man. Cause when, when science catches up with that, I will be back in here and I will do it. And I will, and the doctor's like, actually Todd, there is a new procedure we're doing on the man. I was like, okay, well, I'll do it t tomorrow morning. What? What is that procedure? And he's like, well, we make an incision into your scrotum, we pull your testicle out, we take the sperm right from there, <laughs> in case it's your tubing. And I was like, come here, fucker. Okay, listen. <laughs> God damn it. Run this shit by me in the hall. God damn it, I was showboating for my old lady over there. Now I gotta get my nutsack cut open. You know it's not gonna work. I know it's not gonna work. And she's like, would you really do that, honey? I'm like, hell yes, I would do that. Sometimes you gotta get your nutsack cut open just to prove, you know? <laughs> just to prove you're in this thing. Plus, let's be honest. If you're in recovery, surgery is a snow day because there's a certain point right before they start cutting. They're like, uh, now, Mr. Arnold, we're going to give you something to relax you. And you're like, hell fucking yes, you're going to give me something to relax me. And they give you a shot of something called Versed. Let me tell you, it lasts about 30 seconds, but it's the best 30 seconds of your life. You suddenly have a full head of hair, six pack abs, no X Ys. People love your movies. <laughs> It is worth getting your nutsack cut open. So what happens is they come back for this thing and they say, we, we literally found one sperm and, and it's not enough to juice your wife up and have her go through all the stuff to make 15 eggs. She got it. We met with the adoption lawyer. We're walking out. We get a call for the fertility clinic. They're like, hey, we're cleaning out the refrigerator, your ice cube tray, or wherever we keep this stuff. We got your one sperm, and we happen to have one of her eggs left. You know what we're going to do? We're going to put them together in a dish. They will not multiply, but then we'll say we did everything humanly possible. We're like, great. Three days later, they call back. They are multiplying. Don't get, don't get psyched up because it's not going to work. But we're going to, if your wife wants to come down, we'll, we can put it back into, in the hopper. You know, we'll put it back in there. They won't stick. Anyway, then a month later, they're like, you're pregnant, but don't tell anybody it's that kind of pregnant. You're like, you're not really, you know, two months, three months. Now I think they're fucking with me because they know, I know I've been blessed in many ways, but I'm not going to be blessed in this way. So the shred keeps going on. Then there's a heartbeat. Then there's an ultrasound. The, this baby looks like me with extra clay all over it, you know, and I know it's bullshit. Finally, it comes time to go to the hospital. And I, I mean, they kept this lie going. I was like, this is going to be devastating. They're like, Okay, and I'm looking, for, I'm looking for a crack in their story. And they say, oh, the baby is breached. Everything is fine. But your wife has to have a C-section. I was like, here's where, they, here's where they bring in the other baby, which is fine. I'm in show business. Bring in a I don't care what kind of baby. You don't give me one of Shaquille O'Neal's babies. He was my next-door neighbor. I'd love to have one of his babies. I just want a baby. And they're like, sir, you want to stand behind the curtain where, where in front of your wife. You don't want to see this. I go, uh, you, A, you're wrong. One, I worked in a meatpacking plant for three years. Two, I don't believe this is actually happening. And, and if I don't watch this, I'll never believe it. And uh, I watched it, and it was amazing. And I have a, a perfect son now who loves me unconditionally. <laughs> David Jacks. He is perfect. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And that's why I lost 100 pounds, because you can't be a super fat dad and a super old dad. You can be, and I'm super old, so I got to be able to play with this kid. Listen, you guys are great. This is fun, right? This is fun and exciting.
All right, we're going to be coming back. We have great, four great comics, so get excited. It's going to be a short break, so come right back, everybody. Thank you. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Chris Monty is taking the stage when we return. Yes, this is live. We're live on the air. Let's get the, the real comedy started. This guy is in Mall Cop 2, which is coming up. Chris Monty, Chris. Thank you. How are you, good? Are you done with winter? I'm done with winter. You know what, I'm, I'm more done with the fact that my neighbors say the same question every day. Cold enough for you? <laughs> No, it's not cold enough for me. I like when both my testicles are lodged in my throat. That's cold enough for me. I want to spit and have it freeze. That's my kind of cold. This is not cold. This is a tease. It is, uh, I'm just glad the holiday season's over, right? The holiday season's like, I just feel like that whole period between Thanksgiving and Christmas, you just locked up inside with people you hate, right? It's, you know, family. And it's just awful. Because I, I am, I, for those holidays, they're terrible for me. I'm not married. I don't have kids. Drink up, ladies. I get better looking as the show goes on. But if you come from my family, you're not, when you get to a certain age, no kids, no wife, you're suspect. <laughs> and I got to hear discussions. All the women gather, all the hens, da, 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 da. all the aunts, all the cousins are all in the kitchen. And the drunk you get, the less you know how to whisper. <laughs> I think I can't hear them in there. What's the matter with him? Get got too far. He can't find someone already. Not a bad looking fella. Maybe he's gay. <laughs> I am not good looking enough to be gay, first of all, okay? That's not funny, don't laugh at that. It's different today, man. This is a different world that I grew up in. You can't just go out to a club or a bar and meet a girl. You gotta be online now. That's where everybody, we do everything online, even meet people, dating websites. And I'm online, and I got a tip for anybody who's dating online. Update your profile picture. <laughs> You sh I should be able to recognize you when you walk into the restaurant. That's all I'm saying. Because everybody lies. I have been the victim of false advertisement time and time again. Because for those of you who aren't online dating, if you're hooked up already, good for you. It's just like Facebook. You put pictures up there of yourself and you what you like, what you don't like. And then body type comes up. Oh, body type comes up. And it says slim, thin, fit, athletic, curvy. That's a tricky word right there.